What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to show you what to do if you get a cold PO171 or a PO174. On this vehicle, what we got is a PO171. Let me show you. This is a 2002 Buick Regal 3.8 liter. Okay, what we're doing here, the first thing I do when I get a lean cold like this is I do a smoke test. I do a vacuum leak test to check to see if we got any leaks here. Okay, so what we're doing now is she's warming up the coals. I'm going to show you how this works. This is a homemade vacuum leak tester. It's a smoke tester. This is a hose that's going straight to the vacuum brake booster hose. Okay, we took this off the brake booster right there. And now we put, now we got this on here. Okay, but first we got to warm some coals up. Then we're going to put cardboard in there and show you how to test it. Okay, it's simple. This is a simple test. We actually have more than one code on this car. We got PO463 and U1153. All right, I'm not worried about those, okay? I'm worried about this one right here, okay? That's the main one. All right, so PO171 is bank one is running lean, okay? PO174 is bank two running lean. What is a bank? The bank one is the bank with the number one cylinder on it. Bank two is the other side, the other cylinders, all three or all four, okay? On a four cylinder, you got four cylinders. That's only one bank, so you don't have two banks. So there is no bank two on that one. There's either a bank one or a bank two. And in our situation here, we got a PO171, which is bank one here. This, these cylinders are lined up as one, three, five, and two, four, six on this vehicle, on this GM, okay? 2002, 3800, 3.8 liter engine. Let's check it out now. Okay, what we got here is a bunch of cardboard, okay? So you put a bunch of cardboard in there, and now we're gonna put charcoal, okay? Be careful with this stuff, this stuff gets real hot. We're gonna add two pieces, okay? Then put more cardboard on top. See our smoke building up? It's quick. Okay, now we got a lid right here. Let's put the lid on that. Okay, now hook up the compressor. Now she's gonna hook up the compressor. Okay, now turn it on. Now the air is being forced from in here, inside there, okay? Inside the engine. And look at this right here. Okay, we got this off right here, so let's put this back up, okay? Put all this on the bottom so they can hear me talking, okay? So now you see, you see how this works? We put that on the bottom. Look at this, that's perfect. Look at that air flowing. Perfect right there. You got a little leak here, but no big deal. Okay, now what you gotta do is you gotta look for leakage. Okay? We gotta find out where our air is leaking from. Okay? And look here. We got a small vacuum leak here. We got a vacuum leak coming out of here. Okay? Check this out. Don't worry about this. This is no problem. This is just the air intake duct that, ex that, is, uh, that feeds outside air into the engine. We're worried about intake manifold leaks, okay? Because we have an air leak somewhere here on bank one. Remember, that's bank one. So now we're looking here. And don't get thrown off by that smoke or this. This is not a big deal here, okay? Neither is that. But we do have a leak. We need to find it. So I'm just looking for a leak on the uh, manifold gasket right here, the upper uh, valve cover gasket, I mean. Okay, I don't see any leakage. Look down there, that's not a big deal. So now what you wanna do is you wanna grab your light, see if you see any smoke coming from anywhere. that 
slowly move across. Look up here. I actually believe this is an internal leak. Okay, because these manifolds, these gaskets are known for leaking. Okay. It doesn't say a uh, lean on a uh, bank two back here, but I'm just looking anyway. Okay, we got the air flowing. I don't see any more leaks. So we may have an internal leak. And these intake manifold gaskets on these Chevys, the 3800s, are known for leaking. Okay? They especially have a leaking issue with this area right here, but that's with coolant. Okay? But I'm talking about the manifold gasket that mounts to the side of the cylinder head. We may have an issue on that right there, but can't see anything else other than that and that right there. And this, but that's that's not our problem here. That's not a big deal right there. A lot of the times the PO171 and the PO174 won't trigger until the computer senses that it's sending more than uh, or around like 20% fuel. So when the computer is sending more than 20% plus or minus fuel to bank 1 or bank 2, the PO171 and the PO174 will trigger. So it looks like I don't have any manifold leaks, externally at least. But our issue may be on the inside. Okay? But that's what you do right there when you uh, get the codes, those two codes, that's what you do. You do a vacuum leak test with your homemade vacuum tester. And here it is right there. Okay, the smoke test is done. We couldn't find anything externally, except for that little stuff. That's not a big deal. That's not the problem, I guarantee you. Now the question is, do we have too much air going into bank one, or do we have too little fuel going into bank one? Okay, now what is this made of? We got this jar from the thrift store. This is like $1.50 for this jar. Then I put foil at the bottom, and um, this is the lid. This is the part you gotta fix. This is the part you gotta hook up. This lid comes apart like that, and it's perfect. That way we don't have to move the whole deal when we're twisting it on the jar. So now, this is how it looks. I just punched holes. I didn't even drill this one. I just punched holes, a little bit small. So all I did is punch holes a little smaller than the diameter of each rubber hose I got here, okay? These are off of spark plug wires. Then I just put silicone on it. Yep, and it's that simple. It's not hard at all, okay? Make one, they're simple. You don't have to drill, you don't have to drill a hole in the glass like I did my other one, okay? Make it like this and, it, and it's fast, man. This thing will take you like psh, less than 30 minutes to make, okay? And let it dry for over a day. And then there you go, you have a uh, homemade smoker. Then all you do is just go to Walmart and pick up one of these. Get the cheapest one they got, no matter. And uh, hook it up and just bam. Just like that. Don't go buy one, man. Do not go buy one of these smoke testers. This was practically, let me see, this stuff up here, I just paid for the silicone while I have that laying around. And the spark plug wires, they got a whole bunch laying around in there. Uh, and the jar was $1.50. The pressure is like 19 bucks, 20 bucks for this. You go buy one of these smoke testers for cars, man, you're gonna pay like a good hundred plus. Forget that, man. Make one. Okay? It's that simple. Look at that. Check this out. When you hook this up, this is the end of the hose coming from your homemade deal. Hook this up to your vacuum brake booster, okay? Why this? Because this is the biggest hose, all right? This is the biggest hose available to force air into the intake manifold. So use the brake booster hose. Okay, see if we can find a leak right there. And right there is our vacuum leak, right there. We got a hose leaking right there. A cracked vacuum hose from the bottom of the intake manifold underneath the throttle plate. That's a uh, manifold vacuum right there, okay? Anyways, that's it. That's the smoker right there. That's how you make it, and it's that simple. I'm gonna do a final coat with the silicone. Just 
Come around like that. Done deal. It don't have to be all pretty, man. This works perfect for checking vacuum leaks. This is a smoke detector. That's the done deal. I want to show you this stem right here and use this as an analogy for your life. There's a crack right in the center. If you can see, it's about 12 feet, maybe plus or minus long. It's the dark area right in the center that's oozing down with the black uh, mold or whatever it is. You know, it's just running water that seeping through that crack. Anyways, and so the point is, fix those cracks. But the only way you can fix those cracks, the sinful cracks that are consuming you, that are too strong for you to overcome, is through Jesus Christ. There are some things that only Christ can release you from. Because you are so far embedded into that crack, that sinful life, that you are just consumed totally. And the only way, and the only way to patch that up is through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why he came down and died on the cross for you. Jesus Christ came down and died on the cross for your sins, for my sins. And that crack right there represents an analogy for our lives. If you let the crack go unchecked, unfixed, you don't put mortar on it or whatever, that crack is going to expand and that crack is going to wreak havoc on your life. So get your life straight with Jesus Christ and remember this, Jesus Christ loves you. He died for you. All he wants to do is just restore your life, bring you back to where you used to be, bring you back to where you were supposed to be, the way he planned your life. He didn't plan your life to be wrecked full of sinful desires and little tiny things that are destroying you, little cracks, man. Jesus Christ wants to restore your life. When your life is so full of sin and you can't find a way out, the only cure for that, the only way you can fix that crack is through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the mortar that can fix that crack. Let alone, not only will he fix it, not only will he fix the crack, he'll completely wipe it away. That way you don't have to suffer with all this stuff, man. And then, after you allow Jesus Christ in your life to fix those strong desires, even the small ones that are slowly destroying you, after that, your life will have peace. God wants to free you. God made you. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. God made all this, man. God made all this for you to live and for you to enjoy. He didn't design you to be hanging out in the streets, man, and doing bad things. He didn't design you to be living a lifestyle without him. The reason why you're without him is because you don't know about him. Nobody told you about him. But right now, I'm telling you, Jesus Christ loves you. He'll free you from all that. Everything that is destroying you. Look at that. God made all this. The birds, everything. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. All this God made. And he made it for you, and he made it for me. <clears throat> and he made it for us. And remember this. Never, ever, ever give up. Don't you ever, ever give up. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care who told you you can't make it. I don't care what the devil tells you. Don't you ever, ever give up. And in Jesus' mighty, holy name, Continue to smash on it. Get out there and just crush it, man. Be fearless and go get it. That's right.